Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the newest version of Audi's first all-electric vehicle and the artist formerly known simply as e-tron gets a new name. This is the 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron Sportback S-Line Quattro and in this video I'm going to take you on a tour. Stay tuned. Yes, gearheads, this is the newest version of Audi's first all-electric vehicle, previously known simply as e-tron. That name now applies to all their electric models. We have the e-tron GT, the Q4 e-tron, which we've already tested in sportback form, and now this Q8 e-tron, also in sportback form. Both the Q4 and the Q8 are also available in traditional SUV shapes, but that's enough right there. Let's talk a little bit about what motivates this thing. And you may be wondering, well, why am I popping the hood? And that is to show you exactly what is available underneath said hood uh, for you, because no, there is no gas engine under here. It is an electric motor, or in the case of our Quattro all-wheel drive, dual electric motors here powering this Q8 e-tron Sportback. The official name now, this is the 2024 Audi Q8 Sportback S-Line e-tron Quattro using a 114 kilowatt hour battery, which is rather large. It gets a modest 296 miles of EPA estimated range, though we've not seen over 230 on the gauge cluster. As I said, this does have dual uh, electric motor all-wheel drive, and in normal driving, it produces 355 horsepower and 414 pound-feet of instantaneous torque. There is an option for more uh, if you put it in sport mode. Uh, with boost and gauge, it makes 402 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of instantaneous torque, which makes for a rather fast 5.4 second zero to 60, and will get you up to its 124 mile an hour top speed. But as you can see underneath here, yes, nothing really to speak of in the engine department. They are electric motors, but you can see Audi does supply a charge cable. And much like the uh, Hyundai and Genesis products, we get just a little bit of storage up under the front, uh, under the hood. No real front trunk. This really is best for charging cables and the like. Closing this down, you can see uh, just how it is packaged under here. Not a lot going on, but I do like how we have gas struts and we have dual lashes up underneath here. So that's just a premium feature uh, that Audi likes to secure their hoods or their bonnets on snugly. Closing the hood, we can appreciate the new styling for the Q8 e-tron. There are subtle changes, and our model does have the black optics package, so it gives a nice contrast here on this white paint job. You can see our Prestige model has the digital matrix LED lights that do a light-up pattern when you start them up. We have the sequential LED turn signals, LED lighting all the way around. We do have the LED lighting in the grill with just an all-around elegant look up front here. Being that we don't have a gasoline engine back behind the grill, there really isn't much going on up there, but you can see just around this uh, monotone, Audi grill or Audi logo, we do have some openings here for cooling. And then we have the uh, active grill shutters down here, again, for cooling of that battery. Coming around to the side here, you can see this is an open uh, air vent that does allow air to get through and pass around the front corners of the vehicle, which is rather nice. I will bring you in a little bit closer here for these Audi Digital Matrix lights. They are really cool. I'll show some B-roll of exactly what that light up pattern looks like when you start the vehicle. Coming around to the side, like I said, this is the Sportback variant, so we do get that SUV coupe-like uh, rear roof line. You can get this in a traditional SUV form where you get more of a boxy rear end. 
Ours is the Top Prestige. There is a launch edition. Again, since this is the first year that this is wearing the Q8 name, uh, I guess that launch edition is an appropriate uh, designation for the Top Tram. But our Top Prestige Tram does get these uh, unique five star, five arm wheel design as they call it. They are very aerodynamic, but you can definitely see that five star pattern on them wrapped in continental cross contact tires. These are, as I bring you in, 265 45R21s. So a nice 21 inch wheel and tire package. Again, I would say those are probably one of the biggest reasons why we get a lackluster um, efficiency rating on this one with that massive uh, 114 kilowatt hour battery pack. We should be getting over 300 miles of range. You have to opt up uh, to get 300 miles of range. And even that is questionable, seeing as we are not even getting close to our 296 estimated on the window sticker by the EPA. As we come around to the side, uh, you can really see that sloping rear roof line. It is a very attractive shape overall and does a good job of integrating both the SUV and the coupe elements of the SUV coupe. This does have a single charge port door, but you can option for a secondary charge port door. Audi offers up to 170 kilowatts of DC fast charging, which can take you from 10 to 80% at a uh, compatible DC fast charger in an Audi claimed 31 minutes and should get you up to your long-term driving range very quickly. It's not groundbreaking by any means. I would say that Genesis definitely leads the charge in premium luxury electrified vehicles and how quick they charge with their 800 volt architecture. Uh, they can do it typically in about 18 to 20 minutes. So definitely a faster rate of charge in uh, other products. Uh, definitely look towards Genesis if you're looking for the quickest charging. But being that this is a VW Group product and Electrify America is uh, under the VW umbrella, you do get two years of complimentary DC fast charging at Electrify America stations uh, with the um, e-tron models from Audi. You can see we have a CCS port here and then an electronically closing door. And as I mentioned, you can option for a secondary door here in front of the passenger side. Our model does not have that, uh, just an added convenience feature that uh, is a nice touch here in the Q8 e-tron. This video is sponsored by Electron EV Chargers, which is the only way that we can review all these EVs that are delivered to us. We have their V-Box 48 amp wall charger, and you can learn more about that down in the description below. This does have an adaptive air ride suspension with multiple different drive modes, seven different drive modes, in fact. So you can go from off-road to all-road to uh, efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual. Lots of different drive modes here, and we will get into those as we get behind the wheel. As we pull around to the back of the vehicle, you can see we have LED tail lights back here, LED running lights back here, LED brake lights, LED all the things, and I really like this, the sequential lights back here as well. Audi really does do sequential turn signals very well. I've always appreciated their lighting signature, and uh, it definitely translates here in the Q8 Sportback e-tron. As we look down, you can see it has a diffuser-like look back here, a sporty look. But obviously, we don't need any tailpipes or anything uh, for the exhaust to let out down here. This does have a kick-activated uh, rear opening hatch, but I've got the vehicle running right now because it is very chilly out here and I want to keep it warm. So we will just open the power hatch this way. You can see, unlike the uh, Q5 models, the taillights stay in place and we don't have to have that uh, 
weird alternating tail light function for us regulations you can see it does open up nice and wide and we get a decent amount of cargo space back here that really rivals non-sportback models like the recently announced 2024 suv of the year and the chevy blazer ev with the rear seats up we get a respectable 27.2 cubic feet of space which is more than is behind the third row in the cadillac escalade and fold down the 40 20 40 rear seat and you get 54.5 cubic feet of space with those rear seats folded down which is a little less than the aforementioned chevy blazer ev but this really is kind of in a different market than that uh, uh that'll be the last time i compare this luxury audi to a chevrolet i really do like these uh, cubbies around the wheel wells they are great for storing smaller items like carton of eggs or things that you don't really want to uh, roll around in the back uh, as you're driving spiritedly or sportingly lift up uh, the rear floor cargo floor and you can see a space saving temporary spare and a deep well of storage down here so i could absolutely fit my backpack down here and not have to worry about rear cargo space uh, being impeded by such a small uh, item like my backpack uh, back here. I am not particularly a fan of the way that Audi hides uh, or conceals the cargo back here. So while other SUV coupes from a German automakers, namely the Mercedes AMG GLE uh, coupe that we tested, has a kind of Z-fold hard cargo cover, this really just has this one piece cover that you can pull forward a little bit <laughs> tug forward on both sides it's a really snug fit and you can tilt up if you need to uh, to access a little bit more or you can push uh, pull it down and push it into place there but that really does stay fixed in place as does this little bit in the back window you can see it really is fixed in place it's not like it's going to be coming out uh, very easily so if you have larger items and want to take full advantage of the 27 plus cubic feet of space you're going to have to figure out what to do with those uh, if you need them when you get to your final location I really wish we just had a roller shade or like Mercedes does a Z fold back here. I'll go ahead and show you. I am uh, 5'10", so we have just uh, over a six foot opening here. This does open quite well in our uh, 1963 garage. Uh, doesn't bump anything, and you can see we do have a power close button right there. So very nice hatch design, uh, all said and done. Before we get into the vehicle, I did want to show you the key. It is a nice, slim design. It really reminds me of the size and shape that Nissan has been doing for over a decade. Really like the small, compact nature of this. Not a lot of functionality built into it, though. You have lock, unlock, and your hatch release. No remote start here on the key. I do believe you can do that from the app. Uh, you can precondition the vehicle and do all that kind of fun stuff from the app. Unfortunately, with press vehicles, we don't get app connectivity. So sadly, I cannot report on that fully. Coming up to the doors, these are passive entry doors, and all four doors have lock and unlock functionality on them, which is a nice touch, especially if you had to get a kiddo in uh, first and foremost. But to unlock it, you simply put your hand on the back of the door, pull on it, and it is an electronically opening door. So if you are in a hurry, you will notice that as you pull on it, it takes just like a millisecond before the door actually pops open. It is not mechanically connected to the latch, which is something, again, you will only really notice if you're in a big hurry. Coming over to the door panel before we get in, I do want to show you, you've got lock and unlock here. Very nice uh, attention to detail with the materials in here. You can see we have express up and down on all four windows. Uh, your lockout right here, mirror controls right here. These are heated rear view mirrors, which is a nice touch. You have your hatch release right there and two person memory for both driver and front passenger, which is a nice touch. A little bit of additional storage down there. Coming around to the side of the seats, we get eight way adjustable with four way lumbar and massage, which is really nice. 
and uh, and a, a extending a thigh support, which too is very nice, very adjustable seats. As we look at them, these are premium leather seats uh, that are part of the Prestige package. They are wrapped in Volcona Milano leather, uh, which is a very nice touch. They are heated, they are ventilated up front, and the outboard rear seats are heated as well. Let's go ahead and pop in, get out of this cold weather. Whew. Put our foot on the brake and start the vehicle up. Since it's electric, nothing really happens, just the electronics come on. It's not a big fanfare or production in any way, shape, or form, uh, but it does start getting us nice, warm, and toasty in here. You can see uh, we have dual zone up here. We actually have quad zone automatic uh, climate control, so dual zone front, dual zone rear, all said and done. Let's go ahead and start over my left knee and talk about controls and work our way across. We have our automatic light controls up here and not much else. A little bit of gloss black uh, that I really don't like, but you're really not gonna be touching much over here, except for maybe adjusting the light controls. I do like that you still get some sort of physical control for your lights. Seems like many EV manufacturers are ditching that completely and going into um, having to dig through the screens. These are uh, capacitive touch and they are haptic. Uh, they give you a little bit of feedback. We do get some ash wood inserts up here that does work its way across the entire dash, uh, which is a nice premium look in here with our black leather. We get Audi's uh, digital cockpit plus in here, 12.3 inch screen, very nice, very crisp, very clear, although not my favorite layout when it comes to uh, digital screens um, behind the steering wheel. It tells you all the pertinent information and it is configurable. You can use the roller wheel right here just to show you a few different uh, configurations on this side right here. I, I, I laugh every time we get an Audi. Long-term memory is your trip computer. You can see we're averaging about 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which is not all that great. Again, with those bigger 21-inch wheels, uh, probably playing the biggest culprit there. We have taken this just over 115 miles uh, to a couple of Thanksgivings. And then you get your kind of power readout here in the middle and your date and time over here with a little bit of... Uh, pertinent information down low here as well. You can hit the view button here on the steering wheel and it changes it up just a little bit and gives you a little bit different layout. And then you can, again, scroll through uh, the information that is displayed here on the left side of the vehicle. So just another quick look at it and then you can go back to that. You can also uh, go to your map screen and uh, fill up the entire screen with your map, but uh, that does not work with Apple CarPlay maps, so you have to use the built-in navigation for that to work. And uh, yeah, I typically just leave this here. You also get a readout right here of what your drive mode is in. There are seven drive modes that I alluded to earlier and um, just lets you know a little bit more there. Again, I drove this here from my house and we're already at 219 miles of range. I've never seen over 235 miles, even at a full charge. And I don't like that you don't get a like percentage readout. I don't know what my battery percentage is, but I can tell it's less than 100. Again, it was a very short drive out here and I'm just surprised at how quickly this thing drinks electrons. Uh, so to speak. We do get a full color head up display. I really like that. It's very informative. Keeps me from looking down here too much. I really am just using that head up display. As we pan over to the dual screens here for infotainment and comfort, you can see they are very crisp. They are very clear. I've noted that in every Audi product we've tested. Very impressed with the screen quality uh, in their um, infotainment units. This does support wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I really like. And I will note that in CarPlay mode, this is very quick and easy to use. It does not require a deep push or anything uh, to activate any of the buttons in CarPlay. 
and you can see just tap on it but if you go into any of the built-in Audi modes or any of these screens you actually have to like give a physical touch you get a haptic feedback like you're actually pushing a button and it gives you uh, that auditory and physical feedback uh, to let you know that you're changing things but here you can see all our different drive modes with our adaptive height suspension as we go through each of these uh, different things change I will say off-road takes you to your highest drive mode turns off traction control and puts uh, downhill descent control on uh, a lot of different things going on there. Efficiency focuses on efficiency. I've been driving around in comfort most often, but again, you really have to push in to these and wait for that haptic feedback that is not necessary once you get into Apple CarPlay. You can really just kind of click around uh, in CarPlay without having to push deeply into that. 10.1 inch screen here, 8.6 inch comfort screen down here. And you kind of had to talk about these two together because they kind of work in conjunction with one another. You can see right now I have my front dual zone climate control setting up here. I have heated and ventilated front seats. I will say I really like these. They remember exactly where they were the last time the vehicle was on, which really does come in handy because Again, much like many other EV manufacturers, if you get out with the key in your pocket, the vehicle turns off. It's just something EVs do. And so having that remember where it was really comes in handy if you're hopping out and in uh, for whatever reason uh, rather quickly. You can also control the rear comfort from here, as well as the heated steering wheel, which I don't really like that there are no quick access heated steering wheel buttons. You can see we do have quick access to our heated and ventilated seats, but not our heated steering wheel. To do that, you have to hit this button right here, which now triggers this top screen. And now we've got a dual screen setup going here. You see that is where our heated steering wheel button is. Again, it remembers where it was the last time you did it. You can sing all the uh, seats together or the four zones together or you can control your rear climate again you hit rear up here and then you have to come down here to control your rear climate you can see I currently have it off but I can turn it on and control it from here also have three stage heated rear seats which I can control from back here you see this is also a haptic touch uh, feedback as well we do get this shortcut uh, menu bar up here as well, which oddly enough has a few blanks or as I've seen it noted online, poverty buttons. I don't understand why on a digital display you have blanks. Like you can fill the space via software. Like why wouldn't you evenly space this out? So this one is really confusing to me. I guess it's just to let you know you didn't get the SQ8, the top trim, even though this vehicle stickers for over $92,000, you can get more expensive versions and options. So I'm guessing that's what these poverty buttons are here to remind you of. You didn't get the best. This does have automatic parking. Uh, where you can park it. And again, you can see where these screens work in conjunction with one another. The uh, charging functionality of this does allow for preconditioning, which warms the battery up to accept the faster rate of charge, which is rather nice. And then you've got some power buttons down here to turn the top screen off. And uh, you can also configure the head up display from down here as well. I don't know, it is just a very odd, very interesting uh, dual screen climate menu that I don't really understand why they went the way that they did uh, between all of this and it gets kind of cumbersome uh, having to deal with both the more you kind of click around in here. Not my favorite but also not the worst. You can see here I'm still in rear mode. Let's see if I can uh, there exit rear mode. Now I'm in the front mode. Again it's just kind of clunky and cumbersome. This does have 360 parking cameras in it with a digital 3D view as well. Really like the cameras in this one. I'm gonna hit that 3D button and you can see I can pan around a 3D version of my vehicle. Really helps uh, when parking in our tight garage. Really like the cameras in this one. 
and again you can access that self parking feature right there another shortcut for it right there this does have Audi's uh, full suite of uh, driver assistance technology so I like that you do get your defrost buttons here again these are haptic uh, touch buttons uh, with a haptic hazard button right here traction control and all your drive mode buttons right there your uh, vehicle power button is right here your audio controls are right here it is a knob for volume you can push it to turn it off and you can toggle back and forth uh, by pushing it side to side you do get this palm rest for accessing all the comfort uh, functions right here and then this very interesting drive selector so you push forward for reverse which triggers your cameras you pull it uh, towards you for drive, pull it again for sport, which gives you uh, a more exhilarating driving experience. There's a button right here for park. I do get an electronic parking brake. Coming down here, we get a couple of cup holders that you have to like physically pull these little adapters up to access. And you can see we do get USB-C charging and interface with the uh, infotainment screen, but that cord just kind of hangs out oddly when not in use and very interesting design here on the center console i don't feel like they've really utilized the space to its utmost uh, potential here we do get a chi wireless charger right here with a little gripper that does work uh, quite well for my iphone 14 pro max and with that little gripper it keeps it from wobbling around or making a lot of noise when driving spiritedly we get a leather wrapped uh, center armrest here that does stay exactly where you put it, but a rather small center console here. You can see they did supply us with a microfiber cloth for wiping away fingerprints from up here, but very small center storage here. Not a lot of overall storage in here. And while we're talking about that, I can go ahead and talk about the very odd glove box here. So this dash really goes far back. And in the passenger seat over here, really feels like it's coming at you because of its driver-centric display. Um, so this feels very close to the passenger versus how this feels over here to me as the driver. You can see just how far back the uh, actual glove box is and all this kind of wasted space up front very interesting design here and then i did mention these are heated ventilated front seats with massage they're very comfortable they are very nice coming around to me at 510 i'm very comfortable here we do have the panoramic roof but i've got plenty of headroom uh, in my lower seating position here really like the dual panel glass roof really lets a lot of light in especially when we've got this dark interior but that's enough for the front seat let's go check out the back seat and see what it's like uh, sitting behind myself at 510. okay i was talking about being in a hurry with the doors i'm going to show you see how quickly i can do this and if it even captures on camera but i'm going to quickly pull on the door handle and there was just a slight lag from when i pulled on the handle to when the electronic latch actually released it just something that i've noticed i do like how we get manual sunshades or peasant blockers uh, back here on the rear windows that is a nice touch and you can see we get uh, your power window controls no locks or lock controls or anything else back here a little bit of storage but a, a style door very similar to what is up front coming to the back seat very similar design to the seats but they aren't as bolstered as the seats up front this is a 40 20 40 split bench rear seat but we're going to go ahead and pop in and sit behind myself at 510 i will say i am sitting sitting up higher uh, than i was up front here so very stadium like seating uh, very easy to slide over and, and in the h point or hip point in this back seat is much more convenient for ingress egress but you can see plenty of space behind myself at 510 this is a hard uh, plastic seat back with cutouts from the knees we do get a 
mesh uh, map pocket back here and we get the same behind the passenger seat uh, very nice there again four zone climate control with heated outboard seats all your controls are back here which is really nice you get air vents on the back of the center console and air vents on the B pillars. So lots of uh, options for getting air back to rear passengers. You get your coat hook for your premium uh, uh, German luxury vehicle. Uh, can't say that I've ever used those. And we get a decent view out of that glass roof. Coming around to me though, headroom back here is compromised due to that coupe-like rear roof line, but uh, I do have a nice little cutout here in the uh, ceiling from the um, roller shade for that roof up in front of me. So it, it's not terrible back here, but definitely if you have a taller torso than myself, you're gonna kind of be sitting uh, a little cocked. <laughs> You do have a fold down center armrest with two cup holders back here. And as I mentioned, this is a 40, 20, 40 split bench uh, seat. So you can fold that center section down independently. We do a child seat installation test in our family review coming out later this week, where we even see how much space is in the front uh, seat up here when this is in its rear facing format. So if that is something you're interested in, absolutely hit that subscribe button and then see, nope, unfortunately no recline on these seats. And you can see this is how they fold forward, but that's enough interior and exterior. Uh, let's get behind the wheel and see how she drives. All right, setting off in drive. We are currently in comfort, but let's go ahead Let's put it in dynamic, which again, drops us down into the second to lowest ride height, firms everything up and puts me into sport drive mode, which should unleash the most amount of ponies and torques and allow for that 5.2, 5.4 second zero to 60. Let's go ahead, full stop, down on the accelerator all the way and let go. And okay, 60. <laughs> it's fun, it's quick. It is not the quickest EV I've ever been in, uh, but it is smooth and linear. It is everything you would expect from an electric luxury vehicle. I've said it many, many times here on the channel to the point where I'm sure you're tired of hearing it. EVs make great luxury vehicles, and this is no exception. It is plenty quick for everyday life. And while it is not crazy fast accelerating like maybe a Kia EV6 GT with its like 3.2 seconds zero to 60, it is quick enough for your normal life. If you are accelerating to merge onto highways or uh, just to avoid something in your lane of traffic, this thing is plenty quick and uh, being as there is no transmission or uh, gas engine where you have to rev to get into the power bank, power bank, it is all just instantaneously available to you. It just works and it works well. And yes, there's some electronic spaceship noises uh, that are accompanying the acceleration here in this one. But again, it just works. It works well. Being that we are in a dynamic mode, we are on one of my favorite driving roads here in East Texas. Uh, lots of curves, lots of elevation changes, lots of fun. So I am looking forward to seeing how this quite heavy EV performs uh, when the roads get twisty. Again, we have those 21 inch wheels and tires in this vehicle, which kind of hamper your overall range, but Audi is more known for their driving spirit and fun, especially in their Quattro and S designated models. And this being the S line, not the SQ8, but the S line is leaning more into fun, sporty driving. I will say even in dynamic mode, the ride in this is not harsh. In comfort, it's even nice. Uh, more nice and supple than it is here, but uh, it's firm, you know it's a sporty ride, but it doesn't beat you up. 
and the steering is quick and communicative. Uh, I have had no problems with the overall driving dynamics of this so far in the 100 plus miles that we've put on this, but this really is my first time to really kind of stretch its legs in a sporting nature and to see exactly what this is like uh, when driving a little bit spiritedly. Being that it is a very heavy vehicle, there is only so much you can do to counteract physics, but I will say the adaptive air ride suspension in this does do a good job of mitigating body roll. This is an SUV after all, so driving an SUV sportingly uh, is definitely going to come with some nature of body roll. The adaptive suspension in dynamic mode drops this down much lower. Uh, I, I would hazard that this is a much different driving experience in off-road, though why would you do that? The uh, cornering G's in this, I can say, are quite fun. And so far, I'm not really testing the limits of these Continental Cross Contact tires, especially here on this highly textured pavement that is meant uh, for helping and assisting the grip of uh, tires around it, though they would eat up uh, softer component tires. As we kind of come around these uh, corners and hit some of the bumps, there is a little floatiness to the body, even here in dynamic mode. So it is not like the stiffest, most track tuned suspension. I would assume the SQ8 e-tron firms it up even more than this uh, Q8 e-tron does. It, it's enough. Again, uh, it is sporting enough. It is exhilarating enough. I would not take this vehicle to a track. I would not be uh, trying to post Nuremberg lap times in an SUV coupe, but it is a sporting vehicle uh, that will definitely leave a smile on your face uh, if you want to drive it spiritedly and have some fun in it. It definitely won't let you down in that department, but it is also, again, not a sports car. It is not the e-tron GT. If you truly want a very athletic uh, EV from Audi, the e-tron GT is the one that you're going to want to get because that, much like the Porsche Taycan on which it shares a platform, is basically a sports sedan uh, built on an EV platform and uh, would definitely be the sporting EV of choice. I have not gotten to sample either of those vehicles yet, uh, but I can say if it's anything like this, uh, just in a sports sedan platform, uh, it's definitely going to be fun and entertaining. But this will definitely put a smile on your face as you head down a curvy back road. One last thing to note, being an electric vehicle, it does have regenerative braking, but it doesn't have like a true one pedal drive mode in this one. You get paddles on the backs of the steering wheel to increase or decrease that regenerative braking, but like full on the negative, I'm still going, like it does not bring you to a full stop. So that's something to note. I will also note the adaptive cruise control on this is a full start and stop system. Uh, and in typical Audi fashion, you can adjust the speed level increments by five miles per hour. Uh, I've noted other Audi models do it by two and a half miles per hour, which just makes me smile at how German and precise that is. Two and a half mile per hour increments. And then we also get lane keep assist and all the traditional driver assistance tech in this that you would expect from a $90,000 luxury vehicle. Do one more quick acceleration run. Again, we are in sport mode, uh, dynamic mode, all the things, somewhat level terrain. We are going uphill just a little bit, full on the brake, full on the accelerator, drop the brake and go. It'll push you back in your seat, that's for sure. And 60, yep. It's quick, but it again, it is not the fastest EV we've tested. Again, it'll put a smile on your face. It'll definitely take the breath away from your typical luxury vehicle buyer. 
who maybe isn't used to the instantaneous torque of an electric vehicle. It's fun, it's quick, it's good enough. It'll definitely uh, suffice for a quality luxury electric vehicle with room for up to five, though I don't know I'd put five full-size adults in here. Really is comfortable for four adults, no problem. That is it for me here in my solo performance review. If you want to see our family review where Holly is behind the wheel, Tucker's in the back seat. Again, we install his child safety seat. Absolutely hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video drops. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, Threads. Everything is at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, in the 2024 Audi Q8 e-tron, all that other stuff. Until next time, gearheads. Bye. Okay, let's go. <laughs>